the second day of the final week of the month of October? Well, you have to believe that Tuesdays are actually the most productive day of the week. And today promises to be even more fruitful. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another three hours of premium family entertainment. And I'll grab a cup of your favorite beverage, coffee, tea, cocoa, whatever it iced is. tea, cold <laughs> water, whatever gets you going. Mm. And uh, just stay tuned because you are in for a roller coaster ride today. I am Mike Messi Kim. And I'm Titi Laya Oyinson. We're live streaming at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send your comments. I use uh, the hashtag Wake up mind here on TVC. Uh, of course, uh, our app also. Available for download, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, as always. Mm -hmm. Android, iOS stores, anyone you're using, you can watch us from anywhere in the world. Yeah, the app doesn't come with hardware. Mm. So you're <laughs> definitely sure that this one, I'm not trying to hack you. It's oh, not one, wow. one guy like, in, um, one, in, in Russia one or kitchen Asia. or one garage somewhere who's just <laughs> Tapping and using, but definitely you need internet connection, of course, to connect with us, you can interact with us, you can send in videos, pictures, and all of that. And then, of course, you can also post comments. But the biggest of all is watching us live. Now, today is Tuesday, and you know what Tuesday normally is it's about birthday celebrations. Mm -hmm. I love celebrations. And for the first musical performance on the show, we'll be joined by renowned gospel musician Liza C. Dr. Isima Shobande is an aesthetic physician and expert with skin care. She'll be joining us to talk about chemical peel as acne uh, treatment. Mm. Mm. Wow. So there is, I've heard about this thing before. We should wow. really listen to that one. Mm. Now we have Zambian-based Malawian actor and talk show host Lillian Azizi, who was born and raised in Zambia, joining us to share her life aspirations and dreams. And for uh, the latest, just making the rounds uh, in the world of entertainment, uh, OAP, Radio Kelv, will be here for entertainment news. Also joining yeah. us, we have Fade Ogunro, driving force uh, across various sectors of African media. She's a journalist on radio and TV presenter, executive TV producer as well, among other things. She'll be here in a bit and then finally we have jimmy jean lewis who is a haitian french actor and model best known for his role as the haitian on the nbc television series heroes now we will be talking to him and find out what he has been up to uh, it was the country to pick an ama award did he pick it and remember who loves you Oh, oh, that was nice. Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? Have you guys listened to that? Yes. You have. Yeah. Okay, so one I of the you blessings of being on radio is they send you songs. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been looking for the song. Like, I didn't have the time to stream and everything. Okay. So I wanted something that I would just put by the side and be listening to. Mm -hmm. I asked somebody who screenshot it on uh, WhatsApp. I was like, please share with me. And then he goes, go and stream it. I said, no, voila. And then I get to the office yesterday morning. And Checked my email and Universal Music had sent me the album. Ooh. So, okay, that's all right. Did okay. you? So, how was it? I'll follow you. I'll follow you. No, no, no. I have it already. Well, that's what you have to do. This is even now original. How is it? How oh, is it's it? good. Okay. Okay, so some people think it's corny. Mm. Okay. However, this is somebody just expressing himself, especially as regards his new faith. Mm. Okay. Of course, he's still in the early stages. It's not it is. It is his new faith. I'll tell you why it is his new faith. Maria has gone. You might be a Christian. <laughs> but I actually, actually, exactly. actually, no, actually, <laughs> actually go with Miriam on this one. Yeah, actually, you, you, you might be a Christian for a very like long this time. Is something it's new. Yes, yes, it's true. something it new to sound. him. So many of us claim to be Christians or Muslims or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, but at some point in our lives, we actually embrace the faith. True. Mm -hmm. And yes. so at that point, it becomes new to you because you are suddenly exploring your spirituality, mm. things that you Preach didn't know you could do. <laughs> oh, well, so, so, so when, with someone like Kanye, a lot of people felt he was even a preacher the way he used to rap or the way he raps. He has a special flow, a special way he is, like he's lecturing yeah. when he's rapping. It's like he's preaching when he's rapping. And then let's keep in it's mind always that he's always been, been that Jesus. Way. 
Yes, he's yes. always been Jesus. Yes, the Jesus album was amazing. Even him setting up, even when he uh, brought on John Legend, he was one of the people that discovered John yes. Legend. Yes, he, John Legend's first video was in a church. So this, to me, it's not really new. I think he's just trying to evolve his music and, you know, stay away from all this trap that all these other people are doing. So incidentally, so let me just ask something. Incidentally, yeah. he stopped his daughter from wearing some kind of clothes. Yeah. Yeah. No crop tops, no makeup. Know, yeah. Remember I spoke about his wife? Yeah. yeah. And so do you think, uh, yeah. stop or do you, yeah. I don't know, do you think that uh, the family might, you know, have some issues with it, considering that they're the family that uh, they are open to the world and, you know, okay, they so love... You answer, I'll tell you what Kim said <laughs> about it. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me what know what your opinion is. So I, I feel his, um, his wife's family might have a problem with it because... This is what they've used to shine, to blow. so to speak, to mm. blow, do you get? So they may have problems with it, but I don't think Kanye is one who would want his wife's family to guide his decisions. Definitely not. I don't think he's one who would want Kanye that. Kanye is not I one to let anybody exactly. <laughs> guide his decisions. Yeah. Now, this is what Kim had to say about it. She was asked um, this very question, yeah. and she said that it's been a bit tough for their family, yeah. but they know that Kanye only does what is best for them, mm. so they are going along with it, and it's not so bad after all. This is okay. four Those kids later. Those were This is four kids later. The, when, she, when it was just one child, she could still be doing it. <laughs> four kids four. that need taking care of, at least. So, so, so the issue now is... Um, they don't have anything to prove as Kardashians anymore. Mm. They've proven to the world that no matter what your background is like, you can be a success yeah. or they own their own property. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. holding them to anything Indeed. right now. <clears throat> Except Rob. But, wow. Uh, well, we will get wow. there. I don't Rob. know if you ever My, do, but we'll get Rob. there. Yeah, right. Rob, Rob is... Mike, Rob really? is uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I dude. <laughs> you've, <laughs> seen, you've seen, you've seen and Rob in China, even right? Kanye yeah, West. Rob, Rob and China. China. So the, yeah. the, thing, the thing is that... All the ladies, and big shout out to the ladies in that family. Mm. They're so industrious that mm. the guy just has to even tag, in, tag along and just be you, I just be yeah. cool. Yeah. He's yeah. not tag even along. doing that. He's not even tagging along well, which is like almost the easiest thing to do. Just chill, do nothing, tag along. Who did it for like, Travis Scott's uh, career? And Baba is just... If it was a Travis, he would not Mike, stop anything. Mike, if you were in the family... Yeah. Oh, what, what, what would be of you? The Kardashian family. If Kardashian. I was in the Kardashian family. Ah. Ah. This one. Actually, in this life, you have to understand that people come with different purposes in this life. <laughs> so some people now, they just come now and they just give birth to you and you just start hustling. But some people, you are born into it. You don't need to bother yourself. Oh, <laughs> chilly. Did you guys catch the part where Kanye admitted that uh, throughout the recording of the album, mm. he banned his staff from premarital sex? Oh, wow. So, wow. ah. recording that album was That's about deep. focus and fast. Okay. Wow. Ooh, that that is, is overdue. I'm telling yeah. you, And on that note, <laughs> it's not Mary is going to take the news now. Okay. All right, then I will. All right, so uh, we begin with reports that a police officer has killed his wife and himself at the prison barracks in Ikoi, Lagos State. TVC News cannot independently report the reason for his action, but we are hearing he was upset when his wife threatened to walk out on their marriage. The Lagos command of the police says it's investigating the incident. We have commenced investigation because um, nobody could tell what actually happened because there were just two there. So we're investigating to find out what actually happened, what uh, most of uh, pushed him into taking that drastic uh, measure. He will have been charged for murder, but he's dead. That is one. Then number two, again, for him killing himself, that is a crime on his own for him to have killed himself. Uh, we have laid down procedure of what uh, should be done. Uh, I, will, I will not preempt uh, the investigation at this stage. Let's allow investigators uh, do their job. Moving on, 14 members of the Edo State House of Assembly have accused the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, of anti-party activities and maladministration. Controversy has continued to trail the House after the inauguration of 10 out of the 24 lawmakers that make up the House of Assembly correspondent. Uh, of course, we have Abida Lawal on this one. All has not been well with the political landscape of Edo State for some time now. The inauguration of the state's seventh assembly has only served to deepen the crisis. These 14 members from Edo House of Assembly are saying that the number of lawmakers inaugurated is not up to half of the total lawmakers in the House and is an attempt to truncate democracy in the state. If there's anybody who has performed the act of anti-party activity, it is the governor of Edo State. 
For me, on behalf of my people, we can summarize this this way, that Godwin is guilty of maladministration as a governor, insubordination as a party member, okay? And that is what is actually bringing about the, anti, uh, the, 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 um, the actions in Benin and at those states that is by way of resistance, you know, that is making things go the way they are going now. Life is no longer safe in Benin because of the ambition of one man. The president of this country once upon a time once told us that his ambition is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. That is a responsible statement to be made. And Godwin must be reminded that even if he has the eight years to live as governor of Edo, there will be a day, there will be a day after eight years. The call on the All Progressives Congress to intervene and reconcile the factions created by this development. The rumored rift between the governor, Godwin Obaseki, and Hall Progressives Congress National Chairman, Adam Soshomole, is said to be the major cause of the rift in the State Assembly. The group of 14 members of the Edo State House of Assembly have insisted that constitutionality must be respected and they should be inaugurated before the Obaseki administration can be considered as a legitimate one. Habida Lawal, TVC News, Abuja. Moving on, public servants in the employ of state governments may not benefit from the 30,000 Naira minimum wage approved by the federal government. The Nigerian Governors Forum is saying the increment will depend on the capacity of each state. TVC News senior correspondent Femi Akondi reports. Arriving for a meeting where crucial decisions affecting their states will be taken. Topmost on the agenda of the Nigerian Governors Forum is the contentious national minimum wage recently approved by the Federal Executive Council. But this time, governors are ready to swim against the tide and perhaps slog it out with organized labor. This is despite a federal government's directive to the National Salaries Income and Wages Commission to send the consequential adjustments to states as a template in their negotiations with labor. As far as we're concerned, uh, the best that the forum can do is stick to what has been agreed with states. States were part of the tripartite negotiations. States agreed to 30,000 Naira minimum wage. But states also know that there will be consequential adjustments. But that will be determined by what happens on a state-by-state -state basis because there are different number of workers at state level. There are different issues at state level. Every state has its own trade union joint negotiating <coughs> committee, and they will undertake this discussion with their state governments. That's simply what yeah. we have said. The governors also seem impressed by the way the National Center for Disease Control responded to the outbreak of yellow fever across the country. In August this year, there were reports of 243 suspected cases in 42 local governments spread across five states. There was also a total of 34 deaths recorded among the suspected cases. Members pledged to commit counterpart resources to strengthen mass vaccination campaigns in our respective states. Members also commended the progress made by state governments through their social health insurance authorities to enroll and provide health insurance cover for citizens across the country. The heroic of Dr. Stella Adadevo was mentioned at the meeting of state governors. She controlled the spread of Ebola in Nigeria at the cost of her life. Since then, her memories have lingered in the minds of Nigerians. And there has also been a loud advocacy for the federal government to immortalize her. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. And that's it on the news updates for this hour. We'll take this break, of course, for the weather and return with sports with uh, Mike. Stay with us.
All right, so we have, starting us off on the headlines in the papers today, we have the Punch newspaper. And it says here, minimum wage negotiations, FEC can't decide for states, say the governors. Labor awaits federal government's template, warns FIEMI, wages commission yet to get directive. Right beside the masthead there, it says, Wari Kaduna refineries to be repaired in 2020. Again, Nigerian killed, others injured in South African attack. Asu meets Lawan, uh, says IPPIS is a scam. After Saudi summit, Buhari jets off to UK, according to the presidency. Now, uh, our neighbors must agree to tackle smuggling, says Emefiele. And uh, finally, I'll wrap it with this. Uh, Nigeria's unemployment situation, frightening, according to the AFDB. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. The Nation newspaper is what I have here. And it says, Bayelsa and Kogi 2019, PDP accuses wreck of colluding with APC. Group wants PDP APC against hate speech. Court knocks out AA candidates. Here we see governors reject federal government's wage pact with labor. Negotiation to be based on resources. Union leaders threaten showdown. Uh, of course, uh, here is uh, one story that would make you think uh, it's a movie, but it isn't. Laundered 33 billion naira. Lebanese arrested in 1.8 billion Lagos home. Accomplice Monfer kept 51 bank accounts. 60 million naira wristwatches seized. Uh, here is pictured with Chams after his arrest. Uh, here is descending from the ceiling of his apartment. You might want to take a closer look by grabbing the nation newspaper today. Uh, up here, Buhari heads for London on private visit. President to leave from Saudi. Uh, Oshio Mole Obaseki field worsens. PDP uh, supporters clash in Benin for this one. And finally, PDP APC clash over Article Sud. Parties fight over blackmail. All of these stories and more on the front page of, of the Nation newspaper. Mm. We also have the Guardian newspaper here. It says, government gives condition for reopening borders. Mm. I thought it was a uh, done deal. I thought it was closed. But there seems there are conditions now. Uh, CBN lists gains of closure. And there seems to be many too. Mm. Uh, it feels like, uh, okay, well, page eight has PDP INEC Bicker over presiding officers for Bielsa Guba poll. Wages consequential increments at state's discretion, governors insist. Uh, Nigeria to borrow 803 billion naira in two months forecloses Eurobond debt. Lagos Road still under emergency amid palliatives. Flood sacks Kogi, Kogi, uh, Kogi prison as 228 inmates escape. Mm. Wow, because of the flood. Wow, wow. Uh, controversy as Buhari gains again Mull's uh, private UK visit. As uh, stakeholders condemn secrecy, say taxpayers deserve explanation, only healthy president can de deliver purposeful leadership, ACF insists. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. All right, so we move on quickly to the Daily Sun newspaper now. And it says, governors reject new minimum wage pact. Say payment of consequential adjustments will depend on state's capacity. Okay, 614 bailout uh, deductions. And here we see Buhari begins 16-day private visit to London. Cybercrime, EFCC arrest, Monfaz, foreign collaborator, others, reveals how he landed 33 billion naira, lives in $5 million luxury apartment. 2023, Tinubu best for presidency, declare supporters in Ondo. Uh, down here we see Rivas, Real Madrid sign a ratification agreement on academy and finally just up here police open fire on ipop members in uh, ebui as namdi kanu's family debunks a dad's death rumor all of these stories and more in the daily sun newspaper today we have the vanguard newspaper coming up next federal government can't dictate to states on minimum wage say governors say states will pay according to capacity. Add federal government started deduction of 614 billion bailout funds from states' accounts. Governors looking for trouble 
We're ready for them, say TUC. At the top of the page here, it says, why borders will remain shut, according to MFLA, 90 million Nigerians live in extreme poverty, says the federal government. Buhari to visit London for two weeks after Saudi Arabia trip. Three arrested as armed soldiers invade Oshun Police Command HQ. Currency processing firms must have 3 billion naira capital to operate nationwide, says CBN. And I'll wrap it with this. Once again, uh, 228 inmates escape as flood submerges Kogi prison. Okay, I believe we have time for just one more. And this will be from the Nigerian Tribune, which says uh, minimum wage templates. This happens to be on most of the headlines today. Federal government cannot dictate to states. And that's coming from the governors. After a Saudi Arabia summit, Buhari to head for UK on private visit returns November 17. Oyo has less than 200 doctors. Last recruitment done in 2006. Uh, that's coming from the PHC bus. Uh, centralization of payroll invalidates university autonomy. Uh, that's a claim by ASU. Uh, Senate wades in, laments government's indiscretion to agreements. Here we see a budget for image laundering, MIGA, uh, coming from Lai Mohammed. Another Nigerian killed, two others injured by gunmen in South Africa. Uh, and also from the CBN governor, Nigeria won't reopen borders unless, well, you have to read more on that in the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, there's an investigation on how MDA spent over $1 billion there to prepare 2020 budget. Hmm. And finally, to lift 90 million Nigerians out of poverty, federal government seeks reps approval for $44.21 billion. All of these stories and more in the Nigerian Tribune newspaper today. Yes, indeed. And it's about time we took a quick break. We'll be returning shortly with a traffic update. Thank you for staying tuned to Wake Up Nigeria. It is time for Lagos traffic updates. And of course, uh, with the rains pouring heavily across the country, it's important to look for the best options to get you to your destination safe and sound. And that's why we have you covered, as we intend to help you as much as we can. You can also help us uh, simply by tweeting and sending messages via our social media platforms uh, using the hashtag Wake up Nigeria on TVC. You know what I like to see? I'll tell you. I like to see those traffic selfies. You know that selfie uh, that shows that, man, I'm not happy being in this traffic, but I know I have to be here because I have to go to work. Yes, those ones. All right, uh, this morning, uh, we're going to start off from uh, Orun Shoki to Obalinde. Hmm? Uh, so that's the first route we're taking, at, uh, taking a look at this morning. Uh, just so you know, it's a good time to be on the third mainland bridge today as you will spend uh, just about an hour uh, from Oro to Obalende this morning. I find this almost unbelievable. Uh, so uh, coming out from Oro, there isn't much traffic, just pockets of traffic here and there. Uh, nothing to worry about. As soon as you get on the third mainland bridge, though, it's free flowing. Can you imagine? And today is Tuesday. What happened? Uh, however, uh, just as you pass uh, the Unilag axis, uh, there's light traffic, and that traffic build-up leads to a gridlock, so much so that uh, by the time you get to the Clinic Road intersection, that's the one that connects to the third Milan Bridge, uh, the gridlock still continues through that part, um, bumper to fender traffic till you get off the bridge, uh, light traffic uh, when you're off the bridge, uh, through the Dolphin axis, and then, of course, uh, mostly freeway from that point uh, till you get to Obalinde. So plus or minus, if you're coming from Orun Shoki right now, uh, keep in mind that you would spend just about uh, an hour to get to Obalinde. So if you woke up late, hey, today is your lucky day to wake up late. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do just fine, okay? Now let's take a look at another route. I'm going straight to the Ileko axis. Uh, talking about uh, the Ilepo to Osho, the axis. I should probably take a look at it up to Mushin to see what that um, area is like this morning. So coming from uh, Ilepo to Mushin this morning will take you just about an hour, two minutes. 
What is going on? There seems to be minimal traffic this morning. Okay, so coming from uh, Ilekwo, it's free flowing from the bus stop. And then pockets of traffic, uh, until you get to pleasure, there's light traffic at pleasure. But as soon as you're past pleasure, there's a freeway, but only for a very short time. Uh, because before you even get to that uh, fuel station, uh, the traffic builds up and it's light traffic. That light traffic continues until you're approaching the Anopaja Bridge when the gridlock actually hits you. And uh, the gridlock continues until you're past uh, the, uh, the Yanopaja on the bridge. As soon as you pass that, though, uh, the traffic eases out, but it's not free-flowing yet. Uh, it's still light traffic, but only for a short while. Uh, just as soon as you get to the first bank there, it becomes free-flowing. And that free-flowing traffic continues uh, only for a short while uh, because, as it is, you will experience uh, pockets of traffic till you get to Dokwemu. Uh, in fact, you get to Iyano, because as soon as you're past Iyano, you know that intersection for those coming from Alagunton. Yeah, that as soon as you pass that place, it's light traffic, after which it eases straight into a gridlock. Uh, but the gridlock is only for a short while, okay? Uh, after which uh, it lightens up. Maybe so people can think I'd better take the bridge. Might be a good idea, might not, depends on... Uh, what route suits you best. But passing on that Dokwemu on the bridge, uh, there's light traffic. As soon as you're past Dokwemu Bridge, though, it's free-flowing, amazingly so. In fact, it's free-flowing through cement's bus stop. Can you imagine that? Uh, however, as you're approaching Idimangoro, just as soon as you get there, the light traffic builds, and then the gridlock starts uh, shortly after, like about 5, 10 minutes after, and that gridlock continues until uh, you're close to Ilezik. Now, just before you get to Ilezik, there's a free-flowing traffic that would amaze you. Uh, but as soon as you get to Ilezik, that traffic, uh, the gridlock starts and it continues through Ikeja along. And then as you're getting to National, it eases out to light traffic. But as soon as you get to Ikeja Bridge, it's free-flowing traffic until you get to Arena as usual. Uh, where you experience light traffic and then a bit of gridlock uh, passing under Oshodi Bridge. But afterwards, light traffic here and there, just pockets of light traffic, and then you find yourself at Mushi. So plus or minus one hour, two minutes, and you'll be at your destination from Ileko. Uh, as it is even at, uh, right now, uh, I'll just quickly mention how long it will take you to get to CMS. Uh, before I join the guys in the kitchen. Uh, it will just take you about uh, 50 minutes to get to CMS from Maryland bus stop. So if you're around Maryland, it's a good time to leave home now because it will take you just about 50 minutes to get to CMS garage. And with that, it's a wrap on the Lagos traffic updates uh, this morning on Wake Up Nigeria. Please remember, always have consideration for all other road users. Be at alert and try as much as possible to be patient. I'm sure you get to your destination safe and sound in that way. I'll be joining the guys in the kitchen right now. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. We're well, yet to see you in uniform, though. I think I would, see you in I would uniform I'll get too. her one. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I volunteer to give her one. Thank you. We'll have traffic water, Mary. I'm also uh, check, checking out what's trending. For some reason, there's a hashtag Free copy, copy. Yeah. and DJ copy is trending. And uh, a lot of the time, whenever you see that an artist or performer is trending, you think maybe there was a concert or they released yeah. a new album. Not when DJ copy. Is and then uh, there was that uh, gelato thing that was trended for a long time. Yeah. So and, and you checked out what was why why, why she, was she was trending. Yes, and mm. apparently um, a fan asked why she doesn't give. Um, you do giveaways. money giveaways. And she... <laughs> <laughs> Why she doesn't do money giveaways? And then she responded that she feels like doing money giveaways is as good as paying you to be her fan. Mm. Do you oh, think mm. there's anything wrong mm. with her doing money giveaways? Um, it, it's, the, the truth is, it doesn't really affect her whether... So she's not the reason why you are broke. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, rich people are not the reason really why you, in, as an individual, are broke. Yeah, but asking for giveaways right? doesn't mean they're so, broke. You know. Asking for a giveaway doesn't yes. mean you're broke? At all. See, wow. See, when, would a when, rich when someone people, comes would and you say, oh, person... I like your shoes, and the yeah. person says, oh, you can have it, that's a giveaway. Yeah, do... that's a giveaway, right? But it also but doesn't this... mean you don't have shoes. Yeah. Eh, exactly. Okay, I get where you're going. <laughs> but the way this, this was like, this is like the equivalent of bullying someone it, to make them do giveaways. So because... 
of what this person has said now, if she now decides to now start doing giveaways, it's like she was pressured into doing it. It's not something she really wanted to just do. Jennifer Aniston was pressured into joining Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she did it. And she did, but was she bullied into it? No, she yeah. decided the way, to. Yeah, the way even Copy responded, I don't think it's an issue of even pressure. She does give away. So they said, mm. You don't money, do money, money, giveaways. money giveaways. and these are her, according to her, her cupcakes, her family, you know. Yeah, she said mm -hmm. so. And the tone with which she said it, it seems she wants to start. She said, Okay, you guys are saying I don't do giveaways and all that, mm -hmm. I don't do money giveaways. I felt or I feel, but hey, it's giveaway. Whether you are buying a squid pro quo, whether I you are buying know. with physical cash, I mean, before we started, now we started trade by butter. Mm -hmm. So quid pro quo. So whether you give money Wait. or whether you give an item for something. Wait first. So what now way. makes her different? Okay, so uh, because she comes from real money, real yeah. family money, it's okay. But when it's uh, so-called Yahoo boys doing the giveaways, it's not okay. Do you understand? See, see struggling artists do giveaways. So there's something I've observed about giveaways, especially for celebrities looking for followers. It actually helps you build up your followership. Yes. So our, our money, as you said, mm -hmm. and our family name mm -hmm. has helped her get the followership she wants. Mm -hmm. But some people had to pay for that. Even Daria Talade, I remember years ago, used to give out money mm -hmm. um, in the form of uh, airtime, mm -hmm. especially on his Facebook page. And that's what made his Facebook page really popular then, because yeah, okay. people always wanted to go get freebies. But you know so, that. So use it to drive traffic. If you're not doing money, are you saying people will not follow you? People will still follow Titi, you. No? We are not, we are not follow, but the ah. conversation on your page, the, the traffic to your page might not be as much. But you know these yeah. days, celebrities even... Um, People give celebrities um, stuff yes. to give away, yes. not even because yes. they actually have those things, mm. but because they see them as influential people, they get items and say, okay, so I'm doing the giveaway, so come and drop comments, get your friends to like. It's also publicity but and traffic for the celebrities. you should be very careful about is the people that tell you to drop your account numbers. Be uh, very, very careful. Uh, yeah. So some very it's big, some very big yeah. celebrities will come and tell you, okay, drop your yeah. account number, yeah. I will credit randomly. Mm. Look, see, that's the first thing anybody needs to do to mm. start advanced fee fraud. Exactly. Be extremely very careful. Mm. If it's possible, don't drop your, num your account number. Yeah. Don't do it. Mm. Don't do it. Mm. So there are some people do that it. do this thing of, if you don't drop it on the timeline, mm. you, will, you will be disqualified if you come to my DM. DM. Mm. Yeah. Oga, <laughs> why do you want to give away stuff and you are insisting people should put out their personal account details account out? Details. Who so do we know is sponsoring that giveaway that exactly. needs those account, those account details? details. Yeah. When I see things like that, I tell people, don't do this. They look okay. at me like, ah, you are for me. It's not a matter of for me. It's it is your security. Now. So because you feel you have 2,000 naira today, mm -hmm. the day you have 200,000, they are watching your accounts. It will be swiped yeah. and that's it. Yeah. So okay, you might so, be saying, I have nothing so to lose. For me, I don't ah. feel anybody should pressure anybody online into doing anything they don't want to do. And if she now decides to, it's fine, it's great. But it's just, it wasn't what she felt like doing. It's her page, it's her timeline. Well, for me, you, you are free it. to pressure anybody to do <laughs> anything. It is left to that person, person to, to use their there. discretion to say, I am not going to do it. All right. It is a normal thing to be pressured. People will pressure really, you for anything. They pressure you for money, they pressure you for sex, they pressure you for clothes, pressure you for things. <laughs> if you give in to the pressure, you will not be the person you are today. And it might not be pressure. It might just it might not, be that they're drawing be. her attention to the fact that, yo, everybody been doing it. Why haven't you done it yet? Mm. And sometimes and then yeah, she when, when copy. fans suggest things to you, mm. it might not be derogatory. It might just yeah. be a case of, ah, we would have loved to get this. And yeah. uncle, I can't afford it. Mm. People mm. have asked me, and when I, I will tell them, see, <laughs> if I get 5,000 even right now myself, I know how happy I'll be. So, see, let's, let's respect our space. We are doing a job. You I'm at work here. Let's pressure let's move on. So, so, okay, well, I, I just feel like, so I feel like, you know, um, it, it's, it's a platform and she's a public figure. Like just the same way we are also public figures. Why are no, we no, pressuring no, people no. to give us things? Wow. If you are public wow. figure. No, I'm being I actually serious. think they're just going to pressure you to give them. Hey, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right? you know, so, to, so that issue, see, see, see that's no public figure it's thing and all that. So, so, so let me let me state it out there. I'm not a celeb. <laughs> <laughs> So let me state it out there. No, this is this is this is it's true. That everybody, I hope you can put this on. You see me on the road chewing granola and biscuit, and you're like, ah, Mike, you're chewing, you're eating. Yeah. 
No, I should not eat. It's, it's on air will work. I'm just look back. Okay, so maybe some celebs will want to make you feel like you don't you don't go to the convenience, you don't go to the loo, you don't do so. Oh, but if you see him on the road, I do not. I'm a normal guy. <laughs> please, I'm not a. Don't so uh, don't pressure. Please. One of Mary, where's your car? Uh, don't. Uh, so don't uh, wow. it doesn't exist. <laughs> Very well Period. She should. Anyhow, it happens. We'll be back after this quick break. Wake up, Nigeria. Continue. So I have with me the delectable Liza C. Now she is a renowned and accomplished gospel musician with the full name Elizabeth Indidi Moses. Now she is an award-winning singer, songwriter, motivational writer, and a worship leader. She made her entry into the music scene in 2002 with a bang, which, which was her single. Now she is going to be performing for us one of her amazing singles. Good to have you here, Liza C. I'm so excited. You to be look here. Um, you look prepared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are you going to be singing for us today? Yeah, I'm going to be doing one of my uh, the very first single I released this year, 2019. Okay. We are lights. Oh, tell us a little about that. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, we are the light of the world. It's okay. just set on a hill that cannot be hid. You know, that's who we are, and um, we are called to be a light in a dark world okay. to illuminate, to shine, yeah. <laughs> So to you're, ready to, you're ready to give it to us. Yes. And I see you have your dancers, you're prepared. Mm -hmm. Let me not waste your time. <laughs> Take us away. <laughs> Hello again, welcome. It's your favorite breakfast show. And we're still on the second lap of the show. Mm, hmm. Good morning, now. my neighbor. <laughs> How are you feeling? Wow. <laughs> I don't know the What's that like? Are you, uh, are you doing okay? Okay, yeah, yeah, are yeah you I doing did. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. So I bet you had a blast from the first hour. Mm. Now the second hour is about to begin. And of course, we're becoming part of your routine. Exactly. You're going to get your beverage and then you're just going to leave the TV on. You know, so what's your, right uh, what's your what's your flavor? Chocolate, what? vanilla, uh -uh. coffee, black coffee. coffee. Yeah, <laughs> black coffee. Okay, that's but, it. Hey, mm. my name is Titi Laya. I'm Mike Mesikeno. You can also stream with us if you are not watching on the TV screen in front of you. It's live at tvcentertainment.tv and also on Facebook at TVC Connect. Now, if you want to drop a comment, you know, send some motivation to us, you know, you know, pray for us, maybe. You never know. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria mm. on TVC for Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, Facebook. You can also download our app. It's available on iOS and Android stores. You can watch us live on the app. Also, interact uh, with us, send in comments also via the app. You definitely need a connection yes, for that one. From you anywhere do. in the world. You do. Yeah. Okay, so for a lot of you, this is your favorite part of the show. It's not really my favorite. Ah. <laughs> wow. But hey, Mary. You fooled me. You know, Mike, we know it is hashtag you could Mike's have fooled favorite. Me. You don't, it's your full name. Yeah, look, exactly look, as Titi has said. Change is the most constant thing in life. Not change when it comes to my I'm evolving, Mary. So, Mary, what do we have? Uh, who do we have in the kitchen? Today? Yes, we have a new chef in the beauty now. I'll be introducing him soon. Uh, and he has something really fantastic for us. We are seeing him now. He's tall. He's tall. He's tall. I'm Mary. We're tired. Hey, Mary, I'm seeing your mate today. Flat shoes. <laughs> Mary, that will come and be doing all the channel today. I'm seeing chef that is tall. Mike. Hello, wow. chef. How you doing? Well, great to have you. Very good. Down. Thank you. Great to have you. All right. Yeah. Let's get straight to what we have for the rest of the morning. Dr. Isima Shobande is an aesthetic physician and an expert with skin care. She'll be joining us to talk about chemical peel as acne treatment. Mm. It's an interesting one. Can't wait for that. Then, of course, for the latest gist making the rounds in the world of entertainment, of course, we'll have OAP Radio Kelv 
in the building. And then we also have Fadi Oguru, who is a driving force across various sectors of African media. She'll be joining us today. We'll be talking about her exploits on TV, radio, and uh, amongst other things. Yes, indeed. Then we have Jimmy Jean-Louis. Now, he's a Haitian-French actor and model, best known for his role as the Haitian in the NBC TV series Heroes. Now, we'll be finding out what he's been up to in Nigeria on the couch. Sleeping with my wife. And remember who loves you. Known for internationally, but Ooh. for most Nigerians, I would say fat girls. Fat girls. girls. Like, yeah, fat girls. That's the one that everyone <laughs> everybody remembers, remembers it for. Yeah. The song that also shot to Baba to prominence because of the use of um, African, African Queen. Queen. What did he do in the fat movie? Girls? He was the doctor in yeah. Fat Girl. He was the. He was like the lead actor. He was the where doctor. Were you? Where were, were you? Fat girls. P H A T. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, yeah. okay, it's so about the in girls. The, in the movie, it was dating Monique. Is yes. a Nigerian guy. Mm. He was, acted was... as a Nigerian guy. Ah, I know a long time. Ah. Really. You know, the Nigerian only do you like this anyhow. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that movie? Do you remember watching that movie? No, I. I oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah. I know from the born identity. Movies, no. I watched it and I loved no, it. No, I've seen Fat Girls, and of course I remember, like you said, African Queen was. The soundtrack yes, for the yes, movie that yes. uh, made it and all of that. Mm, so uh, mm. cool one, but he was. You really talk about it. Did he win the award he came for? Um, um, I, so I know that he came for not just one nomination. There were okay. quite a few nominations, but we will definitely, we'll definitely talk to him about that, that yes. and all of that yeah. and, uh, and talk to him. But right? honestly, that particular trailer, we didn't get to watch the end of that trailer. Maybe we'll watch it later. Mm. But rattlesnakes is such a big deal. And, you maybe um, like snakes. Yeah. Don't you? Wow, really, Mike? I don't know. Was it we're talking about World Snake Day Mike? or something? And oh, goodness. The oh, way Mike just, Mike just, just switches. Takes, takes your groove. Okay, no, I but are you talking about how you don't love snakes, right? No, oh, no. Okay, so, okay. But you know, for zodiac signs, yeah? <laughs> okay. One of my zodiac signs is Scorpio, the other one is snake. <laughs> Mary has come. Yeah, Mary. As you said, Mary has come. Mary, I've come. <laughs> no, seriously, Chinese zodiac snake, then regular one. Okay, ones, ah, I was wondering, yeah, because yeah, okay. um, ah, snake is not in regular. Yeah. Mary, you are you regular? Well done. There's nothing regular about this. So the chef How decided to chef? make a headway. Yeah. <laughs> so he's having Hi, an chef. early start without me. So I really have to catch up now. Uh, hello, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. Yeah, so uh, what are we having for breakfast this morning? Okay, I'm making Tagliatel Apollo. What did you call it? Tagliatel Apollo. Tagliatel Apollo. Yeah. Okay, so what ingredients are we making use of? Um, we have chicken breast, okay. tagliatel pasta, okay. cooking cream, okay. olive oil, okay. garlic, onion, um, cumin. Okay. We also have tomato paste. Okay. We also have um, our seasoning, salt, black pepper, okay. ginger, garlic. Also. All right, since you didn't wait for me, you'd have to tell me everything <laughs> you've done to get to this stage. So okay. what is in here? How did you do it? The first thing you did. Okay, first I started with um, cutting my garlic and my onion. And after that, I shredded my chicken okay. and my mushrooms. Okay. And after that, I started with sauteing the onion and the garlic. Okay. Then I, I kept, I, I poured my mushroom in, into okay. it. Sati for some time, then okay. pour my chicken. So okay. I allow it to like sort of pan grill. Okay. So after that, I, I, I poured my black pepper, um, okay. salt, okay. seasoning, okay. and sort of sauté it for some time. Okay. And that's where I am right now before you came in. Okay. So are you doing anything else to this? Yeah, I'm going to add some cooking cream. Some to cream. It. Okay. Yeah. But you have to still keep cooking, cooking it. Cooking it, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that water there is... Um, it's for the tagliatelle pasta. Okay, so it's more or less like parboiling, more like... Or yeah, I'm going to parboil Cook this. it properly. I'm going to parboil. Just cook it the normal way. Okay. Like, let's say five minutes. Okay. Then I'll sieve it, rinse it with cold water, okay. then pour it into the um, thai, um, Apollo sauce. Okay, so for how long are we going to let this cook before the cream goes in? Um, just like another three minutes is fine. Three minutes is fine? Yeah. Okay, okay. So are there other ways we can uh, make this dish pop? 
uh, well. say for example, uh, like the stir fry, can I put like bell peppers to give it some added color? Yeah, if you want to, if you want to, like there's supposed to be basil in this, but um, mm -hmm. I couldn't get basil in all of Lagos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know how it can be. <laughs> I was looking for something as simple as rosemary till I eventually went to the supermarket and I was like, well, why now? Like, people now use more spices these days. So yeah, than the, that than the natural be, yeah, ingredient, yeah. That uh, more readily available. But then, ah, well. Okay, this is coming along nicely. Yeah, it's really almost nice. ready. So it's I'll be ready. pouring my cream very soon. Okay, so when the cream goes in, it, you're going to let it cook, right? Yeah. Are we putting in anything else after the Not cream? Just allow it cook for some time. Okay. And if it needs a little touch of water, of course, yeah. yeah. And you taste it to see if your um, salt yeah. and seasoning and black pepper is enough. And your cumin, of course, okay. is enough. And if it's not enough, you add more. And just try and adjust it before you pouring your pasta. Okay, so the pasta is going to go inside. Is a one pot dish? Yes, one pot dish. Okay, okay, yeah. fantastic. So if I don't want to make use of chicken, would it go against the rules of the, of the meal? You just have cooking is all about being creative. You, you mustn't do the, um, as I just try and be creative. Okay, so I can make use of anything. anything I can decide yes. to make use of fish. Fish, you can use turkey, you can use fish, uh -huh. you can use beef. Uh-huh, okay. So we are feeling adventurous with today's breakfast. What did you call it again? Tagliatel Apollo. The only part I remember is the <laughs> Apollo because we know what Apollo uh. is. <laughs> oh, but of course, it's Tagliatel Apollo. Looking forward to what it will taste like at the end of the show. Yeah. We have to take a break right now, however. Stay with us as we Wake Up Nigeria. Welcome back, people. Now, Dr. Isima is here this morning to show and discuss chemical peel and acne treatment. Now, Dr. Isima is an aesthetic physician with Laserdem Clinics. She is certified by the American Academy of Aesthetic Medicine and Pastage Training Institute. Her core is managing skin acne, pigmentation disorders, scarring, and aging skins. Let's talk to her. How are you doing, doctor? Hey. No, first, I'm sad. <laughs> I'm not the one lying here. So tell us, what's this chemical pill about? Okay, so a chemical pill is a procedure where we take off um, dead um, layers of skin okay. to treat different conditions such as acne and hyperpigmentation and generally to rejuvenate the skin. Uh, okay. So what are we going to be doing for her? Okay, so today we're doing a salicylic acid peel. Salicylic. Uh, yes. Okay, what's that about? So it's it's mainly for acne. It's to okay. help to dry out. You can see she has quite a few um, acne breakouts going okay. on. So she has been prepped beforehand with um, a range of products that would help to condition her skin. So we have minimal um, issues with the procedure because it's something that is a bit technical, okay. so we've done all the prep and so we can go ahead to do the procedure. Okay, so what are we going to be using this okay. morning? So this morning we're using the Image Skin Care line. Um, okay. there's the, I'll, okay. I'll first of all degrease her skin okay. to remove any excess oils and then I'll apply the peel solution and then we'll go on from there. Okay, so now after she does this, is she going to need to continue or this is a one-off? Okay, so with a chemical pill, ideally you should do multiple treatments. Okay. But that would be based on review as well. So after a treatment, you do a review to see how far you've gone and then we can do another procedure. Okay, now for people watching at home, is there a level that it, your acne gets to before you do a chemical peel? Or if you just see a little bump on your face, you could go do a chemical peel? Okay, so if, if it's minimal, maybe you can watch it a bit. But ideally, if you're prone to having acne and you see anything, the best thing to do just to be on the safe side is to go see your doctor so they can prescribe what you may need to do. So either a chemical peel, a laser treatment, adjust your skincare routine a bit or just a bit of advice. So. Okay, okay, we could start. Okay. While I keep asking my million questions. <laughs> problem. Okay, so, so um, now how affordable is this for the average Nigerian? Okay, so chemical pills, um, they range in, in price. Okay. So they're the ones that are a bit on the low side when it comes oh. to pricing. Okay. And then there are some that are pretty expensive, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So you said this is the salicylic, 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 acid. salicylic. Yes. okay, so how many types of pills are there? Well, so there are different types of pills for different things. Um, with this line I'm using, they are the um, self-neutralizing pills, which is what I'm doing now. They are a bit more effective, and then they are the um, 
the, the, the ones that you can take off and neutralize with water or a neutralizing solution. Okay. So, so with a self-neutralizing peel, that's what we're doing ready. today. Okay. So what are we putting first? So first of all, I'm going to be degreasing her skin. Okay. It's already been washed, so this is the solution. Okay. I just apply it on her face. To decrease. To degrease. So to remove the excess oils oil. from her skin. Okay. So I'll just do that. Now, I'm sure there are people at home who are concerned about if side effects mm -hmm. and um, it affecting their health. Now, what do you have to say about that? Okay, so um, a chemical pill can have side effects, okay. such as um, hyperpigmentation, which means the area of the skin gets darker. It, oh, okay. increases the, it could increase the sensitivity of the skin to the sun as well. So that's why we advocate for um, people that do a peel to try to stay away from the sun as much as possible. Okay. And then we also have post-treatment products that will be milder on the skin. Okay. So I'm just decreasing. So I'll be applying the peel now. That's this the peel? The peel, yes. Okay. So I'll just apply a bit on the gauze and wipe it across her face. Is this thing in you? No. Mm -hmm. You don't want to look here. You don't know what's that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you apply, how long do you leave it for? Are you going to peel it off or it's going to come off on its own? So it will come off on its own after the... Um, procedure has been done usually depending on the type of peel it may take a few days for oh, it to okay. start to peel so I'm applying the peel now just firm pressure so now after applying this peel can she go about her daily activities yes yeah, she can just um, to avoid the sun as much as possible and then wear sunscreen if she has to be outdoors okay. or anywhere where the sun can come in is this thing in? Yeah. Okay. So now it takes approximately how many days before it starts to peel off? So generally about two, two, three days before it starts to peel, but it may vary according to the person. Okay. So now for someone like her, when it, the, when it starts to peel off, is she going to have like a proper, proper clear skin or she'll need to do the procedure again? Okay, so for her, she'll probably need to do multiple treatments multiple, okay. because we have the acne and it's still quite active at this stage. So we still have to do a few more treatments to get um, very good results. But she would see an improvement from this initial one. From this initial one? Yes. Oh, great, okay. great. So just another... This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel, eh? I'm fine. No stinging no. or just a little? Okay. Better say the truth of Because <laughs> I have a fan here for you in case. No. Okay, so uh, it stings some people? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. So, in order to make it more tolerable, once it starts to sting or if it's a lot, we use something to cool the okay, skin down. Okay, just started. Okay. It just started. So you can just hold on to this. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, some people are very natural ingredients kind of people. Yes. Now, in that case, if they do need a pill, what do you do in that kind of situation? So I'll probably have to educate them on the necessity of using things like this because they are um, brought from natural ingredients like alpha hydroxy acids are fruit acids, so they are seen from fruit. So okay. maybe because of the name acid, yes. they just vary up, but it's important to do things like this. And then for people that may not have um, serious conditions, they could do, there's an organic based peel oh, that we great. have in the Imi skincare line called the Omedic. So it's really good, even for pregnant women, people that we need to be careful of what we use on their skin, yeah, yeah. they could do treatments like okay, that. Okay, so people who want to do the organic base yes. peel. There's also the organic... Oh, great, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing, Betsy? Mm -hmm. You're about to Is be a baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's stinging you a lot. Sorry. So it could sting a lot too. Why, does, why does that happen? It's just the reaction of the um, acid with the skin. So, but but when you say it, acid now, it kind of like sounds scary. Yeah, no, but <laughs> it's just it's the solution. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So we're going to leave this for how many minutes? Okay, so because it's a self-neutralizing peel, I'm just going to leave it on her face and then she'll go around with it. But I'll cover up with um, the retinol and a sunscreen. Okay. No, but up. for now, are you going before you put the retinol, how many minutes do you wait for? Okay, so I can wait for about three, four minutes and okay. then put it on. 
Oh, okay. Mm. Now, for people who don't particularly have um, strong um, acne situation. Um, um, cases mm -hmm. that want to do like normal pills at home, DIY pills, what would you recommend that they use? Okay, so because pills can also get scary, okay. I usually don't advise to do the home-based pills. Okay. I'll probably say to do a consultation first, first, talk to your doctor. If your doctor is okay with it, then you can go ahead and then do the milder pills. But All those pill-offs. Yeah, okay, do you mean the pill-off pill masks? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> because as a doctor, you would not particularly would, advise. Because they, they, they are adhesive, and so that could actually cause some injury to the skin. So oh. if you are doing a sheet mask, that's different. Oh, okay. But if you are doing something that would stick to your skin and then you have to yank it off, that may cause injury to your face. Oh. So I wouldn't recommend those types. Oh, okay. Or maybe the sheet masks. Okay. 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 So now, cases like this, what do we think actually causes mm -hmm. these acnes that come up? Okay, so um, for her, we were talking earlier and it seemed like um, she had a treatment that was a bit um, harsh on her skin and that might okay. have propagated the acne. But there was probably an underlying factor of maybe genetics or something going on. Okay. So if, if um, you have a treatment that is not done well, this can be an effect? Well, it could trigger a reaction which, okay. if not properly managed, could roll on into something like this but usually what happens is when they such a reaction people go overboard in trying mm -hmm. to correct it maybe get the wrong products mm -hmm. or things and then that's what results in it okay so betty how are you feeling better now, better okay. now? oh right. great so we'll just um finish up oh okay yeah. so if you want to um if you want to do your face, your chemical peel, I'm sure this is definitely going to make your face look a lot better. And you do not have to, you do not have to be bothered about how there are going to be reactions or effects because this whole procedure, as she has explained, shows that it is safe and it's definitely going to get you to a better, a, a better situation for your face. So we'll be going on a quick break, and we definitely hope that after this procedure, Betty's face is definitely going to have a better lift. All right, welcome back. Now it's time for us to take a look at the juiciest entertainment gist. And you know we have you covered in that particular area, but I won't be doing this alone. I'm joined by entertainment journalist Kelvin Ibrahim, popularly known as Radio Kel. Yeah, good morning. Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Oh, more when it comes to entertainment news, I try and I just always try to... <laughs> keep an open mind about things that are happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the first story we have here is about Burner Boy's girlfriend uh, and, uh, you know, Steph London and singing in Yoruba. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, okay, okay. So you can give, can you give us a breakdown on this? Mm -hmm. uh, I th basically, I think she, um, she was performing mm -hmm. and then she now, a dancer came up on stage with her and okay. she started singing, I think, up you know, up you know. <laughs> so I think there's, a, yeah. So I I think a lot of people like the, the Bonner boy has really, you know, um, been training her, give, teaching her Yoruba and how to speak Yoruba and all of that. And I think it's like a welcome development because your love is getting, you know, when you begin to s s teach your lover your, your, your yeah. local la language, it shows that, you know, a lot of things are going on behind the scenes. So it means that he's, you know, settled with her, yeah, sort of. Sort of, yeah. I when think you so. start teaching your girlfriend, that's what I'm your saying. Language, that's what that I'm saying. Like she's gone home to mama, you know. Definitely. Ah, <laughs> uh, but uh, where's she from originally? Um, I don't. I'm not really sure, but I th but she's based in the UK, okay. so. Okay. Um, All right. We'll, we'll but she was that. looking good dancing. Eh? She was. She was. <laughs> it's really interesting what trends these days. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, um, it's also interesting what's happening with British rap a rapper uh, Seth London. Uh, embracing the culture definitely you know? um, and I, I don't think she's uh, um this lady to carry washington i don't know if you saw her she's beginning to speak a lot of Igbo these days oh really um, is, she, is she still with um, definitely yeah they have a child together you, you so. know they have a child together doesn't in, in the what u.s the, doesn't always mean they're still <laughs> You know. Uh, you know, our Nigerian guys are very homely. <laughs> so so I, I still believe they are still together. I was a little worried about that relationship because Why? of her role 
uh, her role in, in the show she does. Uh, well, she used to. It's wrapped up now. Yeah. yeah. But the issue uh, was... Olivia was, Pope. <laughs> yes, being Olivia Pope mm -hmm. and being embraced by quite a few very handsome Caucasian gentlemen might that not go well. so well with, with an Igbo husband. Definitely. You know? definitely. <laughs> so I'm sure he must have put all of those into consideration before mm. settling down with her. Mm. You never mm. know. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, we also have this. Uh, Adekunle Gold lifts pregnant wife after stage performance. Now, a lot of people are like, how do people know that um, st um, Simi is pregnant? So uh, that brings the us assumption. The assumption, the assumption, yeah. So it brings us back to uh, a lot of womb watchers in Nigeria. Like, <laughs> <laughs> people are like, was she pregnant? What is she wearing? How is she acting? And all of that. But I, I watched the clip, and I couldn't be more, you know, proud of a, their relationship. I, think I, was, I was having a conversation with someone um, over the weekend, and the person was like, um, is, are they going to last? Because you know how marriages are these days, you know, the entertainment industry. industry. Mm. But I feel like their love is very genuine. That's mm. what I feel. What do you think? Um, I'm very, they're very cozy together, you know. They seem like um, very good friends, though. And very real. Yeah. Uh, even with what they have put out on social media, which mm -hmm. is not much. Uh, True. You know, they've not put out too much information, which is also good. So they're on the same page about how much information that they want to put out Definitely. there. Uh, but Simi herself hasn't really been going out that much, you know. Mm -hmm. She's been a little, uh, you know, in the uh, shadows. Uh, yeah. She's been hiding out. But Adekule has been doing his thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just really cute. I think they're yeah, really I, cute together. I can't wait to really? see how their journey unfolds. Uh, <laughs> I love to put it with them. We have uh, this one as well. Now, Kanye West drops a new album, Jesus is King. Now, this is the ninth studio album by um, uh, the American rapper Kanye West. It was released on October 25th, 2019, through Good Music and Def Jam Records. Uh, now, the album follows a Christian theme, with West describing it as an expression of the gospel. Now, what do you have to say about this? One thing about Kanye is that I still believe he is a genius. A lot of geniuses have been considered crazy in the past, mm -hmm. but they always come full circle, you know? Yeah. Uh, so what do you think about this uh, album, Jesus is King? Oh, well, I, I, what, do I, what do I think? Mm. Well, it's Kanye. He always bounces back on his feet because he's been in the news of, of recent mm. talking about uh, how slavery is a choice. Mm. Now he's talking about Jesus again. So I, I don't know, but I feel like once it's Kanye, it's always trends, and a lot of people are listen, a lot of people want to listen to it, you know, to criticize it. But I think it's it's great. It's great. He's been doing those Sunday sessions, those Sunday yeah, worship sessions for yeah, quite a while. Yes, yes, I've been following it's that. Probably as well. about a year he started that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it seems to be gathering a crazy following. Definitely. Uh, and then there was a lot of uh, rumors about him, you know, making sure that the Kim is you know, more covered instead of... And their daughter, and yeah. And their daughter, mm -hmm. what? You know, they have four kids now. That's a lot to think about. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's a lot to think about. It's a lot. And I'm thinking, you know, they're thinking about how their kids watch them and see them as that, role models. Yeah. That's, that's what I think. I, every time I see them, I always think of how their home will be because I feel like the, both of them are very divergent. They are in mm. two different worlds. So Kanye and Kim, and he was saying that, oh, he wants, he doesn't want his daughter to wear makeup, mm. doesn't want her to wear, um, he wants her to be more covered and all of that. So yeah. I don't know how that will go down with Kim, but <laughs> you never know. I, I feel like they don't really have that much to prove anymore. They've, they've literally made it. They're, they're there. They, <laughs> I didn't believe that marriage was going to last beyond a year, <laughs> but there's, something is definitely yeah. working out somewhere. <laughs> now, uh, we still have some more news. Uh, Didi takes the first step to legally change his government name to include love. Sean Diddy Combs is one of those celebrities who is never satisfied with their name. But you should know that this is probably the sixth time that he's going through a name change. The bad boy rapper wants his family, or rather his fans and friends, to call him Love, as in Sean Love Combs. Now, it's required by law to provide newborn babies with a name when they're being registered into a country. A lot of persons grow up and never even fathom the thought of changing their name. However, if your official name or Monica was anything like Sean John Combs, Puffy, P, Dad, P Daddy, Puff Daddy, P Diddy, or just Diddy, the thought of changing it might have crossed your name, uh, your mind, not once, not twice, but five <laughs> times. So 
five name changes. <laughs> Sean Love Combs. It kind of sounds nice, don't you think? Does it? <laughs> <laughs> Sean Love Combs. I feel like he's, he's confused. Really? Yes. Okay. Why, why would you how many times have you changed your name? Do you really want to use me as an example? I've <laughs> but, changed my name quite a few times. Oh, really? Oh, my Up stage name. My stage, stage name. Stage name. Okay, so it was Titi Fanta. Oh, really? Then T-I-T-I. -T -I. Oh. Then Titi the Dynamite. That's where we said it. That's yeah, where we yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done that quite a few times. But, okay. but what do you think about Didi? Hmm? Didi, I think he is um, a very interesting fellow mm. and very talented as well. But I'm not just comfortable with the fact that oh, he's having to change his name severally. Mm -hmm. Now he wants to be addressed as Brother Love. <laughs> Brother Love. Brother Love. Brother, no, it's Le. 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 Oh, Le. It's not Love. It's Le. Le. Uh, <laughs> Sean Love. I hear, I hear. I think I can get with it. I can get with it. So he had a new name when he was with um, Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think every time he has a so new relationship or so a new child. So when he left Cassie, you know, yeah, he started to yeah, change. Yeah, change it again. Yeah. Wow. Talking about instability. You never know. <laughs> you never <laughs> <know>. <laughs> but ge generally, mm -hmm. generally, I, I'm really there. There's a lot about these artists and celebrities that you can find to admire. Just take the good and leave the rest. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Yeah, because if you said to start thinking about so many things, yeah. uh, there'd be a lot of work to do. Just allow them to do their stuff. <laughs> All right, I think we can still look at some Kanye West. Maybe we can bump to that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. to the studio. Thank you Once so again, much. Kelvin. Yeah, Titi. Nice we'll to meet you. We'll have you back soon. Never know. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh yeah, anyone who listens to me on radio knows that Kanye West is one of my favorite artists and I'm really pleased about this new album. Welcome back to the kitchen right here on Wake Up Nigeria. I still have Chef Emmanuel here. He likes to be called Stretchy 4.0, but I'm going to stick to Emmanuel. <laughs> and we are still making Taglate Apollo. Yeah. See how I said it as if I hadn't been practicing like... <laughs> <laughs> more you mean. But hey, it's fine. Uh, Taglate um, pasta, pasta is ready, yeah, ready And our Apollo sauce is ready. Yeah. So we are about to make it Taglate Apollo by combining both. Now, what he is doing there? Tell us about it. Okay, um, I'm grilling some chicken. Okay. It's going to be on the side. Okay. So after, after plating my um, Taglate pasta, okay. I'm going to put this on the side okay. just to add some extra touch okay. to the okay. artwork. So how did you do this? A okay, this is basically olive oil, okay. cumin, okay. Um, um, what's it called? Um, salt, okay. black pepper, garlic, and onion. Okay, yeah. fantastic. So this is supposed to be for our side dish. Oh yeah, I can't wait for you to put this together. Oh yeah, put it all together. Make it taglate apolu, not just taglate right. or apolu. Yeah. So if you've never been to the moon, <laughs> we are on the Apollo right now. <laughs> so I'm oh. going to allow this heat up a little okay. before I pour in my pasta. Okay, okay. So uh, what is here so far, especially for those just tuning in? We um, started with the oil. Go ahead. Oil, okay. garlic, okay. onion, then um, the mushroom, okay. the chicken, okay. um, black pepper, salt, seasoning, cumin, nutmeg. And um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, and then of course the cream. The cream, yeah. Now, more, many people know of uh, the magic of uh, rosemary. Many know of the magic of certain spices. The ingredients are on your screen right now, by the way. But many people do not know of the magic of cumin. Okay. That spice is magical. Like there's something it does to food. Yes, especially chicken. In fact, eh, even not just chicken, so try and put cumin in your jollof rice. And then you thank me later for it. It's an amazing <laughs> spice, I tell you, amazing one. Okay, so uh, we're putting this together. Yummy. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to add cheese to this? Yeah, you can add cheese to it, Parmesan cheese. Yes. Oh, but so in my recipe, I don't like to add cheese. Why don't you? Uh, nothing much. It's just, No, it's not that. I don't know. I just, I just, <laughs> don't, I just don't have a reason. <laughs> Okay, because most times when I have pasta like this, I usually ask for extra cheese because uh, really, Mama saw ten thousand phone. <laughs> I should not get max, you know, maximize my money. 
so it's always nice to have that uh, cheesy look on it. Yeah. Though, of course, you know it means uh, if you work out, you have to do it double. <laughs> double. <one>. Yeah, double. <laughs> Are you going to put this in? No, I think okay, this so is Okay, so this is fine for it. Okay, so at the end of the show, of course, you'll see what it would look like when we plate it, ready to be eaten by our guests. Right now, however, the second hour is over. We have to take a break. Stay with us on Wake Up Nigeria. So mm, far, so good, mm, yeah? Mm. Third lap, final lap of the show, and this is where it gets even more interesting. You know, that, that last lap, when you go around, one, two, <laughs> the final lap. When you get ready for the checkered flag and all that, that last lap, you, you, you've seen F1, yeah, right? When you go that last lap, when you, the guy goes, ooh, and then ah, everybody was your last. Ah. Wow. It's That's been it. a productive Tuesday so far. It has been. Glad it that you been. decided to join us. Thank you so, so much for sticking around. Uh, yeah, but we have a couple of things still to come up on the show. I am Mike messi -Kenna. And I'm Titilaya Oinson. Please watch us live. We're live streaming now on tvcentertainment.tv. And also on Facebook at TVC Connect. You can comment on, interact with us. Use the hashtag Wake Up Niger on TVC. Yes, indeed. Now, that app we talk about every day is still available for download. Please make sure you visit the Android store, the iOS store. Just download the app, have it on your mobile devices so you can watch us from anywhere. So I've not been um, up to date with things, but how are things going on in the kitchen? How's, uh, how's it? How's Mary it? is holding it down. Mary is holding chef. it down, eh? Yes, so sir. We decided that nobody else is going to eat except me. Mm -hmm. no so this is my and breakfast. the guests, of course. And I can't wait to dig into. Woof! Wow! Hey. Wow! What's wow. that? Wow! Yeah. That's pasta. That's pasta. pasta. It's pasta. You see those things on it? Chicken and mushrooms, Mike. Whoa! Chicken and the, can you see the chicken on the side? <laughs> ah! Oh, oh my goodness! I'm, Today is one day you wish to be. In I'm the fasting today. Ah! <laughs> Mike is not I'm interested fasting. in these kind of I'm meals. I'm fasting. <laughs> he likes the more peppery ones. Doesn't I'm he? fasting. All right, so uh, that's it. We've got uh, Fadi Oguru who's joining us uh, for a chat. She is, of course, a driving force across various media sectors as a journalist, radio, and also a TV presenter. Yes, so. <clears throat> then, of course, we have Jimmy Jean-Louis. Now, he's a Haitian French actor and model, best known for his role as the Haitian in the NBC TV series Heroes. We're going to be finding out what he's up to in and around Nigeria very soon. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that hits wow. me. Yeah, it did, right? It got you, right? Okay. That was arrow. That was green arrow. So, guys, yeah. it does seem like um, I have a lot to say this hour. <laughs> okay. Because uh, first, I'm just going to tell you the two things happening today. Today is cat day. Okay. And uh, most importantly, because this affects everybody, yeah. today is internet day. Oh, oh okay. Okay. yes. Today is internet day. Hope our providers will not mess up today. <laughs> <laughs> just I am not going to assure yesterday, you. Yesterday, you mentioned that we're still in the world... Uh, mental, mental health, health month, month. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, so guys, uh, earlier, Titi was uh, uh, talking about uh, the whole Puff Daddy names. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then I remember that last Friday on radio, I actually talked about it. It's a very long thing, so I'll just make it as fast as possible. Okay. Uh, so um, his, first, uh, his first nickname was Puffy. Puffy. And that yeah. was because he used to huff and puff. When you oh, got upset, and he was a very angry kid. Okay. okay. So uh, that was where the puffy thing came up because every time he's angry, he goes. <gasps> <gasps> so they started calling him puffy. Okay. Now, uh, from that, uh, al uh, alongside puffy, he began mm -hmm. to go by the name Puff Daddy. That was yeah, in the yeah. 1990s. Yeah. Uh, so much so that by the time his debut studio album No Way Out was released in 1997, it was known as Puff Daddy. He came out as Puff Daddy, and then in March 2001, he got acquitted of a serious charge and switched to PDD. He okay. said he wanted to be known as Puff, Puff Daddy, Daddy anymore. <laughs> and, then, and then he became known as Didi from August 2005.
five did it just uh, did yes, it, which he yeah. said was to simplify concert chants for fans. So uh, instead of fans having to go, that was his reason. <laughs> and then <laughs> he switched back to PDD in September 2006 due to a name lawsuit. Oh, yeah. not for long. He switched to Sean John uh, no. in January 2008. Then swag. <laughs> Swag. Yes, too. Didi used to be known as Swag, swag. for a week. It okay. was back. Um, he was trying to relaunch. Was that himself. legal as well? Uh, no, that, he didn't go. This is the first time he's doing <laughs> legal. Oh, okay. And then <laughs> that was in May 2011 for only a week in celebration of his comeback. Okay. Then in March 2014, he not only switched back to Puff Daddy. He totally denied ever changing any of his, his name ever. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 then, he, 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 then, um, he switched again to Brother Love in 2017. Yeah. But then somebody accused him of um, trying Nature. to take his name because somebody else had perfected that name. Someone was known yeah. as Brother, Brother Love. Love. And then now he has <laughs> officially filed. First time he's officially filing, filing to change his name from Sean John Combs. To Sean, Sean Love Coves. <laughs> and the reason he gave was a desire to change middle name. Wow. Now, some people are saying, is it midlife crisis? <laughs> I'm guessing. Let me now blow your mind. He isn't 50 yet. In fact, his birthday is on November 4th, next yeah. week, Monday. That's yeah. when he's going to be 50. Mm. Well, so if you want to say midlife crisis, so far, that started but, since 20. Well, you can see the crisis has been going on. We just didn't pay attention on. to it. But uh, you know what? <laughs> we have to take the news update now. Sean John, Sean Diddy, Sean, 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 Sean Love. Whatever you are, <laughs> just remain blessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome back. We're still on the Wake Up Nigeria. Now, the Art Summit Nigeria is an annual educational platform to stimulate crossings between art and technology, bringing together a wide range of social actors to assess and plan for the future of Africa's creative industry. Now, here to talk more about this is Ike Chuku. He's the, he's the media handler for the event. Hi, Ike Chiko. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. Nice to meet you. No, to be here. Nice to meet you too. This sounds very interesting. And I know there are quite a number of art lovers in Nigeria. So tell us about this Art Summit. Well, basically, the Art Summit is um, it's a two-day program where we have um, curators, we have artists, we have art enthusiasts coming basically to discuss um, the future of art. Okay. We're coming to discuss what are the challenges. We're coming to discuss solutions also. And we're also coming to like showcase art. So if you love art and you are really, really concerned about art, what's going to be, what's going to be the future of art? What's going to be happening in the next 10 years? Is it going to be Afrofuturism? Is it, are we going to be painting on like, um, on the walls or something? You or get basically, <laughs> yes, basically. So that's what the summit is about. We're just going to be in that space talking about the future of art. And this year, this year's theme is the future of art being collaboration. So we're looking at what can be done to promote collaborations within African artists, um, why are there more collaborations, and what can be done to like push for more collaborations. Oh, OK. So this is, is this the Maiden edition, or what edition? No, the inaugural edition was last year. Um, we had a lot of artists come in. Um, this year, we have more artists coming. Last year, um, we had the keynote addressed by the vice president, okay. and this year, okay. who knows? <laughs> we just might have the president. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so but this year we have a lot of artists coming in. We have the South African artist, Nelson Makamo. Oh, His work is a must see. He's going to be at the summit. Um, we have Indy DMA Feli. We have um, Peju also going to be there. We have Kunle Afalayan. We have a wide range of, a plethora of like artists who are going to be at the Art Summit in Nigeria. So it's basically a place where if you love art, like if you love paintings, if you love photography, if you love anything about art, it's just where you need to be. And it's um, starting tomorrow, okay. um, 30th and the 31st at Queen's Park Event Center okay. in VI. So in it's, VI. it's really where you want to be. OK, so now, um, is there like a gate fee? No, 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 Jerry. That's the good thing. <laughs> it's, it's also free. Because Nigerians oh, want to know that. Yeah, we all love freebies. I love freebies also. <laughs> we so do. basically, you have to go to the to the website. Okay. Once you get to the website, you have to register. All you have to do is just register, and you can attend the first day, and you can attend the second day. Second day. Yes, and also very, very importantly, I know how we love parties in Lagos. Um, we have a party on tomorrow. And <laughs> 
<laughs> and basically, um, there are no gate fees. You just have to like register and this you can like come in. It's like an opening party for, it's, 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 it's an before, after party. After party it's an after party after the first event. Yes. Okay, so you spoke about collaborations for, yeah. uh, for um, artists. Now, what, what, does the co what does the collaboration mean? Like um, African artists and international artists or what kind of colla collaborations? Ba basically, we're looking at collaborations in all sense, just like how we have music collaborations and all that. Yes. We're looking at collaborations between artists like a painter and a painter. And we're also looking at collaborations between artists and like maybe a fashion designer okay. or like a singer or something. So even within the summit, we have, there was so much emphasis on like, while selecting the works, it's work selected way of people who collaborated. So we have an artist, we have Bubu. Bubu is like a fashion designer, she's yeah. a fashion designer. And we also have Medina, who's also an artist. So okay. it's kind of like a merger between two artists, artists. exploring yes. this form of art and That's this form of art, art. and creating something stunning. Okay, so you said the vice president was a keynote speaker last year. So who should we look forward to seeing uh, speaking this year? <laughs> well, I can't let the, the cat out of the bag yet, but okay. um, it's one you must see. Okay. Yes, this year. Okay, now we, are, we know that artists in Nigeria, some parts of Nigeria are underpaid or not underappreciated. Now, what does the Art Summit do for upcoming artists, fast rising artists, and how, what is it putting in place to help promote arts that haven't been um, haven't been showcased. Okay, basically, we have an experiential pavilion this year. So it's, it's for Art Summit, it's not just about seeing the work. Okay. It's, it's a fusion between art and technology. Okay. So we place emphasis on like technology and for technology as it is, we have young, younger artists exhibiting. So that way it gives them a platform for them to showcase their work. And also we have the brightest minds in um, contemporary art okay. coming in. There are a lot of people. You just need to go to the Art Summit Instagram account. You see a lot of artists coming in. So we have this young, this bright minds in the summit discussing. And where they're shedding knowledge, you, you definitely get gems, ways to like push your art, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, how to collaborate, how to pitch your ideas and all that stuff to, to potential gallery owners and all that. So it's, it's a place where you can, also, you can learn. There's so much emphasis on learning because for artists, we have like art here in Africa, it's more like an informal way. There aren't so much art institutions and all that. So there's so much emphasis on learning, okay. discussing, having thought provoking conversations between the artists, the curators, the art lovers. So basically, it's just getting everybody in the room. Let's all discuss about okay. how we can push. push. Forward. Push art. Okay, so now for young, um, young and fast rising artists coming up, you said um, Nelson is coming from South Africa. South, South Africa. So is he going to have like live demos or live paintings or live drawings for people to see, people who come for it? So Nelson is going, we have something called the artist voice. So okay. basically, with the artist voice, we have artists who are like very well known, established artists, and we have them talk about their creative process, basically saying, this is how I create my work. You get, Nelson has gotten like the seal of approval of like um, Eva, she's gotten, he's gotten Oprah Winfrey's okay. seal of approval. So it's someone who's widely known. So we're okay. saying, okay, this is how I create my work. This is something you can learn from. Okay. So basically, if you are a young emerging artist, Art Summit is where you want to be because you're going to learn so much about Somebody. art. Okay, so if you're a young emerging artist, Art Summit is definitely where you want to be. And we definitely do not want to miss that coming up tomorrow and next. Now, up next, we have some Hollywood in the house as Titi and Mike will be having a chat with Jimmy Jean-Louis. Now, Jimmy Jean-Louis is a Haitian French actor yes. and we definitely want to see what he's going to be sharing with us and why he is in Nigeria. He's a model best known for his role in the, or as the Haitian on the NBC television series Heroes. Let's find out what he's been up to. Just told us everything. Yeah. Well, we don't have anything else to say. Uh, well, he's yeah. also a producer. And he is part of the team that picked up an AMA Award on Sunday. Yes, for Rattlesnakes. Yes. Wonderful. Indeed. It's great to have you. Great Thank to you. have you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. So, well, we're going to make sure we don't touch him so that our uh, powers. I know I have some superhero powers. <laughs> so I'm going to make. You know, he was like. So I was late yeah. to the hero party, right? Yeah. So I, there's a lot I used to watch and all of that. And then finally, when I got to watch it, and wow. You know, when I see him, I know, like, oh, this guy. When you, when you know the Haitian yeah, is around. There was some like, sort of, you know, the dude, man, you don't come near me. If I do, you know, things that happen. It's great to have you, Jimmy Jen Lewis, in the house. Welcome. So, you were here for AMA Awards, and Rattlesnakes picked up the, uh, an award for best uh, 
Director, Di directed movie. African born African director. born director movie. Can you tell us about Rattlesnakes, uh, by the way? Um, you know, putting the movie together and uh, what the movie, the synopsis, what the movie is all about. Yeah, the movie is uh, Rattlesnakes is based from a stage play mm. that was uh, written in 2001 by a British uh, playwright. Okay. And it's essentially a character that I play. I play the main character. Mm. And uh, not to give too much away, mm. I play the character of a man who's being attacked by three masked white men because they're all accusing him of sleeping with their wives. Hmm. Right. So we're stuck in a room mm. with that kind of situation. Oh, wow. And then wow. we have a psychological game going on, you know. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thriller, it's, uh, it's full of suspense and, uh, mm. and, and people will never guess the end. Okay, so there's so much more we want to discuss with you, but we have a quick break coming up and we mm. will be back. All right. All right after <laughs> this. Welcome, Welcome back. back. We still have on the couch with us Jimmy Jean-Louis. Now he's a producer, actor, model, and style icon from the way you're dressed right now. I have to say, uh, there's some really great iconic roles you've played. Yeah. Uh, one of them is Toussaint Louverture. Yeah, Toussaint right? Louverture, yeah. And that is the Haitian hero. Yeah. That's what people just say. They say the Haitian hero. Could you give us a little insight into what that movie was uh, about. Well, first of all, Toussaint Louverture won Anama oh, wow. in 2012. Mm. So it was extremely well made. Mm. And he's, he's a character that gave Haiti its independence. Mm. Haiti being the first black republic to fight and win their independence in 1804. Mm. And the father of Toussaint Louverture was actually Nigerian. Mm. Wow. So that's a part of history that few people know mm. about. Mm. And, uh, and I played that character. Mm. To Saint okay. Louverture, which was made by uh, by French people, we shot in Martinique, and that oh. movie collected a bunch of awards throughout the world. Honestly, yeah. now something quite interesting. You mentioning that that uh, the father of that character was Nigerian. Yeah. You've also played you played a Nigerian in Fat Girls. Yeah. There has been this connection to <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> you know, how did it start? When did you have? Uh, no, because I, there's something in you that draws a calls up to Nigeria. Yeah. How did it all start? I don't know. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can't really uh, hide too much away from who you really are. Mm. Uh, I've, I've always been close to Nigerians. I grew up in Paris. You know, Paris is full of Nigerians, mm -hmm. and some of my best friends were Nigerian. The first part that I played, that, where I played a Nigerian, was in Tears of the Sun. Yes, yes, yes. With yes. Bruce Willis. Yes. Uh, where we shot in Hawaii. And then I ended up doing a bunch of TV shows where I played Nigerian, mm. and then came mm. that part Fat Girls, yeah. where I also played Tunde Jonathan, <laughs> yes, Nigerian Dr. doctor. Dr. Tunde. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <Yeah. Then, laughs> Then I have been coming back here, you know, I've, I've shot movies here, mm. including The CEO, I shot Esohe here, mm. Dr. Bello with Genevieve. Mm. Um, and also I hosted the AMA in mm. 2011, uh, 11, 2012. Yes, so my relationship with Nigeria it seems to be quite genuine and organic, you know, I've been yeah. coming back and forth. And when I'm here, I sort of feel home because oh. what people don't think is, or don't know maybe, is Haiti is an extension of Nigeria. Mm. If you take parts of Haiti, you just place them in Nigeria, nobody will notice it the difference. Sink. Wow. Because we look alike, the culture mm. is the same, mm. the tradition mm. is the same, mm. and we sort of move the same way. So, you know. Yeah. I wanted to touch on your, your work uh, with relief when Haiti went through that devastation. Mm. Um, and you, you did quite a lot. Yeah. You, you, you changed your foundation uh, to make sure that it was able to provide relief for people living there. Yeah. But there, there were also some stories about uh, your family as well mm -hmm. and you being worried about your family. Yeah, Can yeah. You let us in on what happened huh. at that time. Well, obviously, it was a very, very dark moment uh, uh, for me, for Haiti, and, and, I, and I should say for the world. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because just to make people understand exactly what happened, Within 34 seconds, 300,000 people died. Wow. wow. All right? In 34 seconds. So I was in LA in my home, and uh, my parents were in Haiti, so I couldn't get hold of them. Mm -hmm. Somehow, you know, I became like the, the, the attraction for all media, whether it's mm -hmm. CNN, mm -hmm. uh, uh, BBC, War. I mean, everybody was after me because I was then playing the Haitian yes. on Heroes. Yes, yes. So their only reference to Haiti was the Haitian on Heroes. 
I couldn't get hold of my of my parents, and once I have to do all those TV appearances, appearances. so my, my mind, my heart was completely conflicted. Uh, two days later, I was able to go to Haiti, mm. so to witness that devastation myself, mm. and it is absolutely horrible. You know, as I'm landing, I'm starting to see what's what's happened to the country, and uh, <laughs> something that I don't wish upon anyone is to is to s start to know the smell of death. Mm. As you're walking around, you start to smell how many people died Best under that building. That. Mm. It's mm. unbelievable. Mm. Uh, so as, as an actor mm. representing Haiti, mm. you know, in Hollywood, you know, I obviously had to do something. Of course. So uh, I was extremely active, you know. Uh, we helped uh, millions of people with other organizations. I also had my own organization called uh, Hollywood Unites for Haiti. And, um, and yeah, I just did my, my best to, to sort of do whatever I could. Okay. Wonderful, know. thank okay. you. Yeah. And uh, thank I'm, you. I'm happy that, you know, yeah. it's the country has been building and all of that. And it's been rebuilt. we hope for uh, yeah. better yeah. memories. It's, okay, so. There's yeah. still now, quite a bit. Let's, uh, yeah. let's yeah. talk about, yeah. let's talk about, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about um, uh, an honest assessment. You have been in Hollywood. You've also done quite a lot in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You've been across, you know, you've gone, but you understand what it is to be in both industries. Yeah. Let's have an honest assessment yeah. of <laughs> Nollywood. A very yeah. honest one. Yeah. You see, because I think we need some assessment like this if we hope to get better. Mm -hmm. How, what do you think Nollywood can do or what do you think we can do in Nollywood to step up the level of what we're doing? I mean, for the first time, we have a film that is being submitted for consideration for the Oscars, yeah. right? In uh, Best Foreign uh, Feature and all of that. Yeah. What do you think as an industry Nollywood can do to step up, uh, to up the ante, to step up the level? Well, I've, I've been following Nollywood quite closely, you know, for the past uh, 12 or 13 years. Mm. Uh, and I've seen the progress. The, the quality has changed for sure. Mm. Some of the storylines are better as well. Uh, we are venturing in things that we wouldn't do 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, I like the way you said we. we. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I I'm like part that. of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good, good. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Go on. yeah. And, 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 and yeah, so you can see that some of the movies shot in Nigeria are getting some kind of visibilities outside of Nigeria, mm. meaning by that in the Western world, whether it's in America, in Europe, in England. Um, and yes, of course, Genevieve is nominated uh, with a movie, yeah. uh, which is a great news because now, you know, Nigeria has to have that kind of presence. You know, sure. it's, it's, it's necessary. You have a lot of interest from, from outside as well coming in. You start to have a lot of distributors starting to have a strong presence in Nigeria mm. because they understand the value. Okay. When you have more than 200 million people in one country, in one country yeah. trust me, there's money behind that. True. Uh, often what we forget is that uh, movie is show business. Mm -hmm. There's the show that's there to entertain people, but it's yeah. a real business. Meaning by that, uh, uh, it needs to be well structured. Mm. And I think that's where maybe uh, Nollywood is lacking. Structure, I like Structure. Mm. Uh, you need to have a few bases in place just so you can grow properly. Maybe having a few unions, mm, unions okay. for actors, directors, producers, mm. costume designers, and all those people. Mm. Uh, maybe more schools to start training uh, actors, directors, actors, directors and makeup artists, makeup and artists. all those people. Because it's a real business. People don't understand how much money you can Goes make in. out of that. Yeah. If, if California is very wealthy, it's because of the movie business, mm. you know? So, so, so that's one area I think uh, Nigeria could do better, or Nollywood could do better. It's, it's to, to set the structures. Uh, Structure. Yeah, and of course, distribution is key. Mm -hmm. uh, a country that has uh, about or more than 200 million people need more outlets, you know, more cinemas, and, and, and a proper channel to get to those cinemas as well. Speaking so things are not very clear yeah. yet. Not structured, not structured enough. Yet. Speaking of cinemas, uh, yeah. there's a movie that's out in the cinemas right mm. now. Yeah. Mm. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I'm in a movie called uh, Everything But A Man. Mm. Uh, and funny enough, the lady who directed Everything But A Man is the same one who directed Fat Girls. Wow. So it's that's same... a relationship that's lasted yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's been okay. it's been about uh, 13 years now. Mm. And uh, and my co-star in the movie is Monica Kaloun. You might know her from. Okay. 
Best Man or Best Man Holiday. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was the lead uh, in those okay. movies. So okay. it's, a, it's a very beautiful, romantic, uh, mm. slash comedy, dram dramedy. <laughs> and, uh, and I think uh, Nigerians are enjoying it, mm. you know. Uh, it, um, there is a Nigerian storyline within the movie. Okay. We have a lot of music from Nigeria, a lot yeah. of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like okay. Nigerian culture meet Af American culture. Now, yeah. you've been in so <laughs> many shots. I saw a shot of you uh, just now in Toussaint L'Overture. Yeah. Yeah, just now. Yeah. I, I would, do you have a monologue from that you could give us? I don't know. Is it too much? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well, I mean... Is it, it too it's, much? It's, 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 uh, it's difficult to recreate a character because you need so much. You need the costume, the makeup, you okay. need the situation and everything. Mental... Okay. Yeah, mental preparation and everything. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if I can remember... Hmm. Uh, okay, so let that, me see. that's your camera right there. Uh, if I can remember, Fulan. Um, yeah, maybe okay. I can try to do. Okay, okay, yes. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Go ahead. Kimun, Kimun, sir. Kimun. C'est Moïse. Ou même, restez là. Ou même, venez où? C'est Moïse qui joue ça. Ces hommes sont des traîtres. Tu es là. Okay, so just before we came up, I saw that scene. You know, the one where someone betrayed. Yeah, where that is, that's betrayed. the only one I could remember. Wonderful. Wow. Let's Wonderful. see if we can catch Yeah, let's feel a bit of it. Let's feel a bit of it on screen. Let's feel a bit. Oh. Amen. Wow. <laughs> There's so much we could continue oh, on with the show, but we have me. to head over to the kitchen now. Okay. Uh, okay, but just, okay, okay, just before that, just before that, there's still, oh. um, there's still some more that I want to ask. Now, the, you, you spoke about the, the father of this uh, figure, Toussaint, yeah. uh, being, okay. being a Nigerian. I said that's something many people don't know. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit of that history? Uh, well, I guess, uh, first of all, because of slavery, mm -hmm. we know that most of the people that were uh, placed in Haiti, mm -hmm come from this part of the world. Okay. okay. But precisely, uh, this particular character, mm. uh, his dad came from, uh, from royalty, mm. from mm. Nigeria. Mm. So um, actually the blood of my people mm. are bloods, are Nigerian blood, and I am Nigerian, you know, deep wow. inside as well, wow. you know? So, so yeah, uh, there is a lot, as I say, you know, we, we're the same group, it's just that we've been mm. placed mm. somewhere else. So we have a Nigerian chef, yeah. <laughs> who's been hard at work okay. and uh, he's prepared something for you to try out. All right, let's All go right. for it. I saw, you know. well, <laughs> someone who, who's lived in Paris, you must Thank have you. had uh, quite a lot of different cuisine. Mm. Yes, yes, right? I've, uh, I've tasted yeah, quite a few things yes. in my life. Yes. Okay, Hi, so, uh, uh, so Hi. Jimmy, pleased to meet you. Hi, Hi. Hi. Jimmy, nice to see you. Okay. All right, hello. hello. Hi, Jimmy, Hi, nice Jimmy. one. Please, please take a seat. Okay. So please. please take a seat. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're our guest today. So. For you. Uh -huh. Bienvenue à la cuisinière. Welcome Merci to beaucoup. the kitchen. <laughs> oui, oui, oui. So today's chef oui. is uh, Chef Emmanuel. Okay. Uh, he likes to be called Stretchy 4.0. Oh, shit. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and he's made this fantastic breakfast. Mm. There's a story behind this breakfast, and I'm going to let him first tell you about it before we tell you why we have two different dishes here. <laughs> or like what we prepared earlier. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so this is Tagliatella Polo. Yeah. I was... I came here for Tagliatella Polo. <laughs> Until... <laughs> Until we found out our guest Until is vegetarian. I found out you're vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. And then we had to just quickly <laughs> put this together. Mm -hmm. So this is my, um, what I like to call my reddish vegetarian pasta. Vegetarian. Okay. So yes. you did well, because I told you that like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. 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 Is this nice. Nice. Is this yeah, that's, uh, it has yeah. mushrooms in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I don't be scared that those are problems. No, no, I'm not scared. <laughs> okay. so, so I have to eat? Yes, yes now? go you ahead. Have to have and nobody's going to come well, eat uh, with me? We have ours. We have well, ours. We're definitely going to If we eat with you, we don't see anything. See Mike, Dad. It starts on the show. Oh, yes, actually. We do nothing for him. It's your own. So what do you think? I like the spices. Whatever it is, you know, it's very different from what you would usually get in a Western kind of... Oh. Yeah. So no, Jimmy, it's true, though. You can, you can... Jimmy, you sabi speak pidgin? 
Uh, uh, well, if I have to, uh, you know. You do. If I want myself in a win situation, you don't food for pigeon. For pigeon. I say Nigeria, where you be? I know. Now you're putting me on the spot. But the food is good. The food makes sense. Yeah. Because when you say dispatch, I say, ah, this guy now really Nigeria. Confirm. It's been a wonderful time. On that spicy note, we have to wrap it up. We have a big thank you to say to everyone who was on the show today. Yeah. And a, a really big thank you to Jimmy Jean-Louis for stepping into the studio today. It's mm. been fun, but the week is not over yet. It isn't. Of course, isn't. we're going to be here tomorrow, 6 a.m. Wake up, Nigeria. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.